Guess who's back? Billy, Billy, Billy. We'll talk about that and so much more from a jam-packed weekend on today's episode of Locked On Sooners. You are Locked On Sooners, your daily podcast on the Oklahoma Sooners. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, Sooner Nation? Welcome to Locked On Sooners, and thank you for making Locked On Sooners your first listen every single day. Today's episode is brought to you by Prize Picks. Go to prizepicks.com slash locked on college and use code locked on college for a first deposit match up to $100. Daily fantasy sports made easy over at prizepicks.com. Thank you for joining us. My name is John Williams. You can follow me on Twitter at John Nine Williams. My buddy here is Josh Helmer. You can follow him on Twitter at Josh on Ref. The show is at Locked On Sooners. And you can hear Josh Monday through Friday from 9 to noon on the KRF Sports app. And Josh, the news of the weekend, easily by far, story number one, the return of Billy Bowman for his senior season, foregoing the NFL draft to play in the 2024 season for the Oklahoma Sooners. How huge is that for Oklahoma? Oh, it's gigantic. Uh, obviously, uh, you were hopeful that you would get one of or both would have been gigantic for Oklahoma defensively with Danny Stutzman and Billy Bowman. But to get one half of the equation in Oklahoma's defensive backfield back means that uh, Oklahoma with Bowman, with Bowen, with some of the young talent around those two uh, in addition to Bowen, has a chance to be pretty special if you can keep Gentry Williams healthy. And obviously we're going to talk about a cornerback addition for Oklahoma. It's got a chance, the defensive backfield, because of Billy Bowman's return, to be arguably the obvious strength of Oklahoma going into next season or one of them, uh, certainly defensively. So, no, it's a, it's a massive addition uh, back into the fold for Oklahoma as they – make the move into the SEC. You know, I, th- I look at the the safety room in particular, and I think, okay, there is a lot of talent there. Peyton Bowen, obviously, the five-star, had a ton of uh, reps this season, made some plays, showed that he was a dude that is going to be a really, really good player, still l- relatively inexperienced. And then you got Robert Spears Jennings, another guy who relatively inexperienced, but you saw some really positive flashes from, yes, you hope those guys take steps, but were you ready to thrust them into – full-time starting roles next season. Maybe you wanted some veteran leadership out there. Some guys that you felt like, okay, we know what we're going to get out of Billy Bowman. We know uh, that he's going to be a playmaker in the back end for us. You love the fact that he's back. I mean, it definitely raises the ceiling for the safety room and the defensive back room as well, because as we're going to talk about, I mean, it's going to be a really, really young group. Presumably Woody Washington's gone. Now, we know Key Lawrence is gone. Reggie Pearson is out of eligibility. You needed to have some veteran stability back there, and Billy Bowman brings that going into his fourth year with the Sooners now. And he just keeps getting better and better each year. You know, I mean, he was he was good as a freshman in a rotational role, playing you know a variety of positions. He got better in his second year when they really lined him up as safety and said, hey, you're a safety. And then when Brent Venables came to town, Brandon Hall, it's just – continued that trajectory uphill and I mean had a great year this year with the six interceptions three interceptions returned for touchdowns he was Oklahoma's second leading tackler uh and and I think it just goes to show that okay you stick with the process you continue to trust your development you continue to build upon your game and you can show that progress and show that development and you look at places like pro football focus he was the fifth highest rated safety uh for the 2024 NFL draft class and so he had a lot of reasons, a lot of a lot of financial reasons to want to go to the NFL and decided, you know what, I'm going to stick around one more year. I'm going to go play some SEC ball and see, you know, just what that does. And and whether it had anything to do with, you know, improving his draft stock or not, it's going to improve his draft stock, just having much more experience. But it's going to improve Oklahoma's chances of being really, really competitive and continuing that upward trajectory for their defense as well. You look at uh, a lot of the top programs and teams a lot of times that are going to the college football playoff, winning a game or winning a national championship, get a decision like this or two. So the 
importance of it, I don't think we can overstate what it means that Billy Bowman's elected to come back for Oklahoma, the stability that he provides in terms of the playmaking. You mentioned the the interceptions, the pick sixes that uh, was a Sooner record this season. This is somebody that we were bemoaning the fact that he wasn't uh, – a finalist nationally for, well, an award that goes out to one of the top defensive backs. He had every right to be in that conversation. So maybe he comes back and gets that award. And if he does so in the SEC against the type of talent that he will see, then uh, obviously he will be handsomely rewarded financially. But the, the big thing here for Oklahoma is it stabilizes the back end. It uh, brings key veteran leadership back for a defense that, Brett Venables is still trying to fully mold into uh, what he probably hopes will be, if not the ultimate strength of Oklahoma, one of the defining characteristics of OU football going forward, which is we got safeties that'll come up and hit you, go make a play on the football, lock guys down and across the board, just be very, very stingy defensively. We saw a good bit of that early this season, and then it started to taper off as the year went on. But uh, Billy Bowman's return, is uh, obviously gives you reason for optimism that oh you can kind of get all the puzzle pieces together maybe as soon as year one in the SEC. Because what it also does it just allows you to not have to force somebody into the lineup that isn't quite ready for a week in week out starting role. Now you hope that guys like Peyton Bowen, Robert Spears, Jennings are able to just take that next step for you and you know, line up and be in every down safety, but you need a rotation of guys. I think we saw that this year that Oklahoma, when it was at its best is when they were the healthiest and they had a lot of depth and they could rotate guys. Now you hope that that continues to be the case going into next year. Now this is Billy Bowman's third season in Brent Venable's defense. So he's going to be kind of the, the, the voice that everybody looks to for leadership, for understanding of, of the system and where everybody needs to be. But again, you, you get that experience back, you get that playmaking ability back, and it, it it goes a long way when you have a dude in the back end with six interceptions. It makes quarterbacks think twice sometimes about throwing their direction or at least understanding, okay, where's Billy Bowman going to be at in this coverage? Uh, and then maybe holding the ball just a, a split second longer which maybe makes things a little bit better for your pass rush, helps your corners out. Again, having that experience is going to help a young cornerback group out a lot. Something else that'll help a young cornerback group out a lot, adding some veteran potentially depth or maybe a, a guy that could start for you a week one. We'll talk more about that coming up after the break. Passion, drive, and patience. What brings home the winning trophy is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. From superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more, whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber and not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit. Only available to U.S. customers. The Oklahoma Sooners secondary got another boost on Sunday as Deja Malone, the San Diego State cornerback transfer, committed to the Sooners uh, Sunday afternoon. And I think this is huge. You know, we talked about the youth in the safety room, obviously getting Billy Bowman back really helps them. It's going to help guys like Peyton Bowen and Robert Spears Jennings and Day McCullough and uh, Jaden Hardy and Michael Patterson McDonald and Reggie Powers that's in that room next year. Well, cornerback was going to look a lot younger and potentially, you know, have much less experience again with the presumed departure of Woody Washington. We haven't heard anything official, but it's expected he's going to go and pursue the NFL. That leaving a big, big void in veteran leadership in experience at cornerback. Now you've got some really, really talented players, but getting a guy like Dejo Malone 
it's it's going to help raise the ability of everybody at least add more competitive depth to this cornerback room that hopefully will kind of push everybody and, and drive everybody because you've got a talented young group of corners you just don't have a whole lot of experience there just yet this was such an obvious position group for Oklahoma that you felt coming uh into this transfer portal season you say off season but obviously there's a bowl game to be played for Oklahoma but uh feels in some ways right like we're in that roster construction phase we are and so uh, there's some off season elements there so as you enter this roster construction phase and you start thinking about okay what does 2024 have in store who's coming back what does it all look like for OU corner was you know beyond offensive line defensive line kind of one of the obvious position groups to look at and say oh oh, you would love to add a veteran there someone that's played a lot of football that uh, is experienced that can step right in and either be a plug and play starter or a a plug and play depth piece to some regard and they've gotten that in Dejan Malone out of San Diego State let's uh, say 90 tackles over the last couple of seasons uh, 12 passes defensed a forced fumble, a sack, obviously uh, the four interceptions. I like uh, the size. That That's exciting. 6'2", 200 is fun to think about. And it, as you kind of project what maybe this will look like, if you want to say that Malone is a starter for Oklahoma, assuming that you get that good bill of health throughout the course of a season, thinking about what the safety position in that group looks like for Oklahoma, if you tell me it's – Malone and Gentry Williams at corner. I think Oklahoma's in a pretty good spot to start next season, John, in terms of the defensive backfield as a whole. Harrington may be back at Cheetah, whatever Cheetah's going to look like, right, for Oklahoma. But, uh, and obviously there's other young na- young names at corner to think about for OU too. So as uh, a lot of these moves in the portal go, and we've talked about this, maybe it's not a total slam dunk that Malone just steps right in and is a starting cornerback for Oklahoma, but obviously he's going to have a pretty good chance to be that uh, as what an all mountain West honoree and a ton of production to his name. So this is position Oklahoma needed to add some depth, get some experience at, and uh, they've went and found that very quickly out of the portal. So this should excite Oklahoma fans. Yeah. Just a couple of notes on Dejan Malone here. Uh, he played a lot over the course of his career. Uh, He's played over 1,200 snaps over the last two seasons at San Diego State. According to Pro Football Focus, in 400 coverage snaps, he allowed just one touchdown. Uh, In the Mountain West, he had the fourth lowest completion percentage against and the fourth lowest passer rating against among uh, players with at least, what was it? You know, I lost it, but... Uh, at least 50% of defensive snaps. So, you know, the guys that played a lot, he was the arguably the fourth best corner in the Mountain West statistically. But you get a guy that's going to be able to come in and compete right away for a starting spot. And, you know, Gentry Williams, I think we expect that he's going to be one of your starters at corner. But there's so much uncertainty a little bit with with his health. You know, he's just battled stuff all year long. And, and maybe it was the same thing he was battling all year long. And, and that's why he wasn't able to stay completely healthy. And maybe with a full off season and, and more work in the strength and conditioning program that he can get a little bit more durable because they need him to be more durable. They got to have some, some uh, stability there week in and week out. But you get a guy in Dejan Malone who was really, really durable, played a lot of football and was very, very productive. But, I I mean, Oklahoma's got a young and nicely talented cornerback group. I mean, Jacoby Johnson, Makari Vickers, Josiah Wagner, uh, you know, Jeremiah Newcomb that's going to be coming in the 2024 signing class, Eli Bowen that's coming in the 2024 signing class, Kendall Dolby, who played a lot of Cheetah this year but could also be a factor at cornerback as well. I mean, you've got a a lot of really intriguing names out there at corner that are going to be competing for snaps. But adding a guy like Malone really does provide you um, that veteran floor, that veteran safety net that, okay, if nobody else is really stepping up, you've got a guy that you know has played a lot of college football that's going to at least give you solid, you know, and maybe he can give you a little bit more than that. Uh, and oh, and then there's Kanai Walker, you know. I, I think that's another name to continue to watch, you know, in this cornerback room, but you've got more depth by adding Malone to it. 
Another place where you may not have a whole lot of depth, Josh, going into 2024, and that's along the offensive line. We know that Walter Rouse and McKay Mattire are out of eligibility and are moving on. Now you've lost Andrew Rame and Tyler Guyton. Now it was expected that Guyton was going to go to the NFL draft. He'd been getting top 50, you know, mock draft positions back in the summer. Andrew Rame, it was a little bit more up in the air until he kind of posted that he was out training in California um, at a performance center. Then it seemed a little bit more obvious that he was going to be going to the NFL draft as well. But four out of your five starters um, for most of this season are gone to the NFL. So it leaves you really, really thin up front. So Troy Everett, Joshua Bates, I mean, one of those two guys, is that probably how this is going to wind up for Oklahoma next year? I, I would get the sense that this, if you weren't feeling that way already, that probably now you rev up the engine a little bit on trying to kick the tires around on finding a legitimate, let's go get that veteran guy that can play center for us out of the transfer portal too. I know that obviously you've, went and found a transfer portal uh, interior lineman in Everett in the last cycle. You feel really good about Bates. He was the top rated center signee in his class. So one, one more uh, off season here of seasoning of physical development, who knows, M maybe he's ready to step in and take the thing over, but probably Oklahoma would feel a little bit more comfortable just going ahead and, and finding some interior offensive line help. You know, you've seen the one addition with Spencer Brown, but uh, I would imagine that three, four more names, if they can swing and hit, that uh, Oklahoma would be willing to try and find out of the transfer portal up front. I mean, that just feels like the obvious, most important position of need for Oklahoma to go find guys that can help you that are veterans straight away. You got some young guys outside when you think about well Caden Green could be guard or tackle we'll see what happens there Sexton you feel good about the future we've talked about Taylor at times for Oklahoma but uh probably OU is going to be in the business of if they can find three or four more guys interior exterior of that offensive line they need to go find those guys John yeah now there are some really intriguing offensive line targets which i'll we'll dig into a little bit this week um as the transfer portal season continues to heat up because yes they do need to add some more depth if not just depth but add a starter like if you can go get a bona fide starter like the kid out of you know texas a m who was a true freshman all-american i mean by all means do what you got to do to go get that guy because he could be your right guard uh going into next season because i mean you feel good about Caden Green, you feel pretty good about Jacob Sexton. I think obviously Spencer Brown, he's coming here to be your right tackle. And then you look at right guard and you look at center. Now, Troy Everett, he was a good player at Appalachian State, had a really nice game against Texas A&M a few years back. Is he ready to be an every down, every week center in the SEC for you? Possibly. It's very possible that, that that's where he's going to be at his best for Oklahoma as opposed to at guard. And then there's the Josh Bates, you know, uh, option and possibility there as well. Can he develop enough in his second offseason with the Sooners to go and take a job uh, that's that's up for the grabs? That's up for grabs. So there's a lot of intriguing elements there at offensive line, and you're going to have a nice group of incoming freshmen, especially at interior offensive line at guard that might be able to have a Caden green like impact where they push for a starting role in year one. But again, it's, it's lofty expectations to expect true freshmen to come in right away and, and be impact players. So we'll see how that goes, but it's going to be really, really important for Brent Venables and Seth Luttrell and Joe John Finley and Bill Beatenbow to really hammer home and solidify that offensive line going into the sec so that you can protect the guy that's going to be your starter starting in the Alamo bowl. We'll talk about the quarterback uh, news that happened over the weekend coming up after the break. Today's episode brought to us by Prize Picks. That's prizepicks.com. Check them out, prizepicks.com backslash locked on college, where you can use our code locked on college for a first deposit match up to $100. Prize Picks makes daily fantasy sports easy. You can place your entry in 60 
seconds or less. Prize picks, really cool thing that they do. They even offer a reboot policy so that your entries stay in play, even if one of your players gets injured. So for football and basketball games, if you have a player who exits the game in the first half and does not return in the second, that player is rebooted. Prize picks is the only daily fantasy sports platform with an injury insurance policy. And uh, many of you know, but uh, if you're unfamiliar Prize picks, super easy, just more than, less than on a number of uh, different statistics, football, basketball, you name it, whichever sport you're looking at. Daily fantasy sports made easy. So head on over to prizepicks.com backslash locked on college, where you can use our code locked on college for a first deposit match up to $100. Daily fantasy sports made easy. And thank you for making Locked On Sooners your first listen every single day. We are your team every day here on Locked On Sooners and the Locked On Podcast Network. Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. Go to Locked On Sports Today on YouTube and subscribe to the first ever national sports 24 7 streaming channel josh the quarterback situation seems to have ironed itself out dylan gabriel heading to oregon it is officially official official jackson freaking arnold time yeah it's exciting exciting. obviously this is uh, i think what sooner fans were hoping would happen uh, in terms of jackson arnold getting to play this uh Alamo Bowl, get a little jump start on the relationship building. You, you've had, I guess, that portion of it. Relationship building, maybe not the right phrasing, though there's some of that too, right, with your offensive coordinator, Seth Luttrell, with Joe John Finley, your offensive coordinator there. But the 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 how this is going to operate, just the operation of this offense, you get a little jump start. Qu- quarterback gets a, a little seat time in this bowl game, so all of that is – positive for Oklahoma. You and I sat here, and I won't speak for you. I'll speak for myself, but I felt like this was an opportunity that Brent Venables, Oklahoma, Seth Luttrell, they couldn't waste. They needed to give Jackson Arnold this opportunity to, if not start the game, which would have been preferable, then serious, legitimate, long long segments, series of this game, and obviously it's going to be the the whole enchilada, baby. Start the game, go try and win the thing, operate, and, and play a good Arizona team. So this is beneficial for Oklahoma, obviously, uh, on the Dylan Gabriel end of the equation. I think it it makes sense. Oregon gets a, a plug-and-play starter, someone that's – uh, you know, in, in the top 10 in terms of the passing yardage career marks in NCAA football history, they uh, they get somebody that really there's not going to be a moment that's going to phase Dylan Gabriel. He's kind of seen just about anything in college football. So as they make their move from the Pac-12 to the Big Ten, uh, it makes sense why that would uh, be good for all parties. I'm sure there's a nice financial NIL incentive for Dylan Gabriel. And so good for him, man. Happy for Dylan. He obviously was an important piece for OU as they started this Brent Venables era, but everybody wins, right? It doesn't have to be, even if we revisionist history, this thing at some point, this is what OU fans want, right? This is what probably Brent Venables wants. This is what Seth Luttrell and Joe John Finley want. This is what probably Dylan Gabriel wants, right? Fresh start somewhere else where he's got a chance to make some some NIL dollars and, and compete for a national championship in a Big Ten championship before that. So I just – I look at it, John. Everybody wins. It's a good fit for him. And obviously for us, now the Alamo Bowls, uh, I would say, a little bit more interesting. Yeah, it definitely is a little bit more interesting. And I feel like, man, there's going to be some must-see television with Dylan Gabriel in 2024. I just went and looked at Oregon's schedule. And outside of, okay, their non-conference, they get ho- – he plays Hawaii at Hawaii. Like, first of all, how cool is that going to be for Dylan Gabriel to go into uh, Manoa, Hawaii and play in his home state in front of a crowd that's probably going to be, you know, really excited to watch him play. Then they get Idaho, Texas Tech. And I mean, the the home slate is pretty favorable. They get Michigan State at home, Ohio State at home. Um, and then really the only big road game that they have, yeah, they got to go to Madison, Wisconsin, but you get 
you get to go to, you got to go to Michigan. I mean, you get to go to the big house and that'll be a really interesting environment for him. Uh, you know, we, we've seen the weather things be you know challenging at times, but then you get Washington at home. Uh, so it's going to be a really fascinating uh, 2024 schedule and 24, 24 season because so many big time games that Oregon will be involved in, but also gets to play at home in Hawaii week one, which how much of that impacted his decision? I don't know, but that definitely had to be a nice little cherry on top, but now happy for him. And, and I will remember his time here fondly. You know, if that defense in 2022 is just a little bit better, if they're just a field goal better per game. That, that's an eight or nine win football team, in my opinion. Uh, but for Jackson Arnold, dude, it's, it's time. Now is the time. I mean, we saw the flashes throughout the, the season when they gave him an opportunity to throw the football. He was really, really good. I mean, that BYU game, I'm not going to you know, go overboard about the way he started it. It's more to me about how he finished it because it's hard to come in cold off the bench having not thrown a pass in two months and then to come into a tie ball game and say, go win us the football game, Jackson. It's, it's a little bit tricky. Well, started off a little bit sluggish, got things together, and finished really, really strong, got the Sooners the win. I'm pumped, man. I'm excited to see them just kind of air it out and let him be Jackson Arnold and not hold anything back. And, and I think he's going to shine and give everybody a lot of reason for optimism You know, going into the season. I think, one, let's, let's take all the positive things and, and build from there. And then if he does have a turnover or make some mis, you know, mental miscues here and there, it's okay. He'll learn from those things. That's why you have an off season to continue to develop. But I mean, it's going to be a really, really good time. And, and we're again, all, all love for Dylan Gabriel, but we're going to have very few moments where we're seeing Jackson Arnold under throw a ball. You know, it's going to be a little bit harder for Brendan Thompson to outrun Jackson Arnold or Jaden Gibson or Nick Anderson or whatever. And I'm excited to see what Jackson Arnold's going to be able to do with that group of receivers and, and get Drake Stoops involved. And we, we heard from Drake Stoops last week at the, the Bulls Worth Awards ceremony. He's pumped for Jackson and the opportunity that he's going to get uh, to start in the bowl game. He thinks the world of him as well. And, and I think it's a great head start to, like you talked about solidifying the communication and the, the understanding and the relationship between quarterback and offensive coordinators and play caller uh, this bowl season, and then have something to build on going into 2024. No doubt. And look, it's not make or break either way. Probably we're going to be feeling a little bit more comfortable and confident if he goes out there and throws for a bunch of yards and runs for some and, oh, you put some, you know, serious offensive production up on the board. But more than anything, don't get too too high or too low with this one bowl game start. We've seen probably both ends of that spectrum over time where – uh, I'm thinking back to a specific Sugar Bowl that was a pretty electric start that obviously the rest of it didn't pan out, you know, according to that type of trajectory. So whatever it looks like, I mean, take it for what it is. It's uh, one early bit of seat time, that little bit extra that clearly is going to help him for 2024, whether or not it's a, a great start where they roll up a bunch of offensive numbers and points or if it's the opposite and it looks like, okay, maybe this thing's going to take a little bit of time don't get too one way or the other over it. Ultimately, it's a positive for Oklahoma. That's right. It's going to be a fun Alamo Bowl. I know the folks that are going to be going down to San Antonio are going to have a great time, but make sure you're tuned in here on Locked On Sooners. We'll get you ready for the Alamo Bowl. Continue to cover the transfer portal and whatever recruiting news transpires over the next few weeks as we get ready for the early signing period as well. Follow Josh on Twitter at Josh on Ref, myself at John Nine Williams. The show is at Locked On Sooners. Subscribe to Locked On Sooners wherever you get your podcasts. We are your team every single day here on the Locked On Podcast Network. But until next time, he's Josh Helmer. I'm John Williams. Boomer Sooner.